pregame has wrapped. The Cougars are on the court. A drop step to the rim up and in. And T.J. Haas, that was beautiful. BYU Basketball is presented by America First Credit Union, helping you achieve financial health. Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. Smith's, low prices, market fresh at Smith's. Sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. And by Deseret First Credit Union, serving the LDS community. It's time to play BYU basketball. To the elbow, to the lane, to the rim, a handoff to Yo with the throwdown! On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let us meet tonight's starting lineups, courtesy of America First, Utah's top credit union. We begin with the visitors, the pilots of Portland, 7-9 and nine on the year. 0-1 oh, in the WCC, they're 1-5 and five in true away games. Terry Porter, former NBA player and head coach in his third season with the pilots. His record 27-53, and 53. it's been a bit of a rough go as he gets things going on the bluff. Starting at the point, number two, JoJo Walker, 6'1", 170, sophomore from Portland, Oregon. At the two, number 10, Marcus Shaver, Jr., 6'2", 185, a sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. At the three, number 11, Josh McSwiggin, 6'7", 220, Jr., from Lowborough, England, and Casper Junior College. At the four, number 14, Tahiro Diabate, 6'9", 240, sophomore from Bamako, Mali. And the starting center tonight is number 12, Theo Akuba, 6'10", 205, freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. So... The Pilots will start 6-9 and 6-10 in the post. Uh, Mark Duran introduces your BYU Cougars. At the point guard, number 30, T.J. Haas out of Lone Peak High School. Number 24, McKay Cannon is your two-man senior out of Shelley, Idaho. Three-man is 44, Connor Harding, the freshman out of Pocatello, Idaho. Four-man, number 23, Yoli Childs, the Bingham High product. And at the five spot, the big fellow, the man in the middle, number 41, Luke Worthington, 6-10 senior. Out of Wisconsin, that's your starting five for the 9-8 and eight Cougars. Coached by Dave Rose in season number 14. The officials for tonight's game, Tommy Nunez, Brent Moe, and Jimmy Casas. And Casas Tommy in Nune- the houses. Is, I call him Jimmy Houses occasionally. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tommy does have the ball ready for play. Tommy Nunez will toss it up. And it will be Akuba and Childs for the opening tap. BYU in the home whites with blue. And Portland the road blacks with white and purple. And here we go at the Marriott Center. Great to be back. Ball is up. Akuba slapped to Diabate. And JoJo Walker will take it from back to front. Left to right as we see it and you hear it. The Portland front court right in front of us here at the Marriott Center. Diabate, top of the key left wing to Marcus Shaver. Shaver feeds it mid post left to McSwiggin. McSwiggin backing down on Connor Harding. A jump hook is good from Josh McSwiggin. And the Pilots take a 2 nothing lead. It's just a nice move. McSwiggin isolated on Harding. Back down and got a nice little jump hook. TJ, front court right side, right corner. McKay Cannon. Cannon guarded by Shaver. Holds it. Chest high, begins to bounce toward the top of the key. Stops on the wing right side and gives it between the circles to Connor Harding. Harding back to Cannon. Three-point range your right side. A closeout by Shaver, a pass high to T.J. Haas. T.J. will drive it and was held on the penetration. And Brent Moe will make the call and will call it against Mark uh, Jojo Walker. So Walker picks up the pilot's first foul of this game. It'll put BYU on the end line. 41 seconds in. T.J. to trigger. BYU down two zip. Right beneath the basket to Yo and Yo. Hammers it home with two hands. So the assist to T.J. Haas off the OB under. Yeah, well, back screen. He came from the left elbow, and no one switched on Yoli. Easy play. Pilots in front court right side. McSwiggin to the left elbow. High to Shaver. Shaver dribble handoff right side. Walker. Walker left wing McSwiggin. Stripe extended. Three-pointers blocked by Connor Harding, but back into the hands of McSwiggin on the baseline. Yoli and sends out to Shaver. He could have got that, but he turned a block out. Didn't see it got blocked. Shaver drives. Teardrop strong. Got his own rebound and resets to Akuba. Top of the key. Angle left to Walker. Walker will drive and kick Shaver. Shaver gets past Cannon. Jumps it from 15 feet and strong on it. Offensive rebound. Diabate lost it. Tapped out of bounds by the Pilots' BYU basketball. He should have had that one too. Looked like TJ uh, kind of raked uh, Akuba's arm and, and, uh, and caused it to go out of bounds. That's really three offensive rebounds that possession. BYU basketball brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. TJ on the bump. TJ to the right junction. To the base right and sends out right wing to McKay Cannon. Now to Yo at the right elbow. Jumper from there is off the iron. Rebound by Luke Worthington. Step through. Goes up a little too strong with it. And off the window and the rim. No good. Rebound to Portland. Good, good look play. by Luke off the reset. Just didn't finish. Just tends to hurry that shot a little bit. 
Low to Diabate. Diabate fouled by Yoli Childs and the conversion chance for a three-point play. 4-2 to two Portland and Yoli picks up BYU's first foul. And the Pilots go to the free-throw line. Tahiro Diabate averaging 10.9 points per game. Second leading scorer for the Pilots and a good free-throw shooter for a guy that goes 6'9", 240, shooting 85% from the stripe. But he's uh, gone 12 consecutive games at 9 points or fewer. So the double-figure scoring games are a little less frequent. Let's do it. I don't want to put it on the big balance. Going to the monitor. I'm not sure what it is. The referees were holding up two like it maybe was a two-shot. And don't count the basket. Terry Porter said holding up one finger like this is, no, this is just a three-point play. And reset that points per game number for Diabate. He's at uh, 5.6, which makes more sense with that double figure oh, okay. scoring stat. Just a matter of who the foul was on, they're going to give it to Luke, which is actually great because Yoli raked him across the arm, but they say Luke hit him with the body before the foul. As I make that stat adjustment, uh, Diabate's free throw number is so significantly lower. He's making about half of his free throw attempts. And he goes to the line to complete a three-point play with 18.07 to go until halftime. Free throw, no, and the rebound to Luke Worthington. So Diabate dips under 50 on the free throw miss. Front court left side to McKay. Haas cycles to Harding on the right wing. Low to Luke, up high to Haas. Left corner for Cannon, missed the three. Rebound pilots. Great inside-out ball movement. You're not going to get a better shot. Shaver on the right wing. Pops a pass up top to Akuba. Theo Akuba holds it out for Shaver. Shaver on the bump. Left wing three from JoJo Walker's missed. Rebounded by Childs. And BYU's away left side of the floor with Cannon. To Harding on the wing left. Connor shooting it well from distance of late. We're two and a half minutes in. Yoli will try it from deep and score it from three. That's our first Mountain America Credit Union three-pointer of the game. With every three-pointer, Mountain America donates $50 to the American Red Cross. Yoli for three, and BYU's up by a score, five to four. Lead change, and BYU back in front by one. Well, he hasn't been great with that shot this year, but he's capable, and he shows it there. Diabate, perimeter right. Elbow left to McSwiggin, guarded by Harding. Harding closes out well on McSwiggin, top of the key, Diabate. Diabate jabbing on Worthington. On the bounce of Diabate with a five-second shot clock. Still dribbling deep into the shot clock. A handoff up high to Shaver. Pulls and fires from three, barely grabs the front rim, and then off of Harding's hands out of bounds. New possession for Portland with 16.50 to go until the break. A good defensive possession. Cannon knew he'd have to shoot a tough shot. Hand in the face, got the miss, and... Then it was such a bad miss, I don't think Connor was ready for it. Baseline send in for Walker. McSwiggin left side. McSwiggin up top to Shaver, and now right wing Walker 40 feet away on the right side. JoJo Walker runs a show for the Pilots, who trail at 5-4. to four. Dribble give top side to Shaver. They're weaving with McSwiggin, and now Walker straight away down on a 15-second shot clock. JoJo Walker at the far boundary. Left corner, McSwiggin holds it between his knees on Haas. Crosses him over, takes to the paint. Stripped out of his hands by Haas. Gives Haas the steal, and TJ comes the other way with it. Open for three is Harding. Pulls, fires, and scores from the right side. Connor Harding, another Mountain America three-pointer, and BYU takes the 8-4 lead. Coop's now doubling up the pilots. Connor Harding shoots and scores from deep, and for Connor, that's now a three-pointer in six consecutive games. He's seven for his last 12 from deep. He's starting to feel it's always tough when you're a freshman to get that groove, but he's about there. McSwiggin between the circles. Stripe extended left side to Shaver. They go down the... Block left to Akuba. Akuba jump hook is short. Defended well by Childs. And Yoli grabs the rebound. TJ down floor. Nice. McKay. McKay beat his man to the rim. Up and in. Driving lay and score from McKay Cannon. And the Cougars take a 10-4 lead. And BYU's now scored eight straight against the Pilots. And timeout taken by Coach Terry Porter with 15.45 to go until halftime. We'll take a break, too. BYU 10, Portland 4 the score on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. BYU on an 8-0 run, leading Portland by a score of 10-4. 15.45 to go until halftime here at the Marriott Center. BYU basketball brought to you in part by Fillmore Spencer, Utah Valley's largest top-rated local law firm. They can play offense, defense, or provide a little coaching. Fillmore Spencer solving problems and seizing opportunities for you, your family, and your business. Well, Mark, BYU ended non-conference play last in the West Coast Conference in three-point percentage. Through two games of league play, BYU's first, and those three-point numbers have begun to turn around in recent weeks. 
Well, TJ has been much better, and uh, the re- re- or the emergence of Connor Harding. Interesting. Maybe this is completely apocryphal in my mind, but it seems like Zach Selyus, his first four or five games, he's like one for 16. I, he, he was really bad, and then he shot 50 over 50% that year. I, I think it's really hard for a freshman to come in and feel really confident with that shot. And Connor is a guy now that looks very confident in in the three-point percentage, and he's been a part of that uh, better play from the three-point line in conference. Connor Harding with three of BYU's ten. The Cougars four of seven from the field, two for three from three. Portland two of eight overall and 0 for three from distance. Portland basketball as we check back in. The Pilots playing with all black uniforms with the uh, Pilot anchor logo, the purple anchor logo across the front of the jersey with no words. Pretty clean look. Yeah. BYU's lineup stays as it was to begin the game. Pilots in front court. JoJo Walker near the timeline. Pilots down six after leading by two at four to two. McSwigan, arc right, on the bump. Flares it to Walker, hands off to Akuba, and Walker took a little bit of a hip check as he went down the lane. It'll be a foul on T.J. Haas. So T.J. picks up BYU's second team foul here in the first half. Portland is single team foul and Pilots basketball out of bounds with 15.26 to go until the break. Ran a little flare curl out of the timeout. T.J. did a great job to get back to his man, but a little too aggressive. Next Wigan right side, top side. Left wing now to Walker. Walker takes it out between the circles. And now straight away. Still on the bounce is JoJo Walker. A drive and kick to the free throw line to Diabate. Jumper short, rebound. Worthington hands to McKay Cannon. McKay front court right side. Looks down the barrel. Right wing for McKay. Nick Emery soon to check in for BYU. TJ top of the key. A no look whip to McKay for three right side. Good. McKay Cannon. BYU three for four from the three point line. A Mountain America three pointer for McKay Cannon. And BYU takes the 13 4 lead, 11 0 run now for BYU. He's kind of the other guy since he started, has shot really well from the three point line. Diabate left side, a swipe there by McKay Cannon, knocking it away from Marcus Shaver. Nick Emery will check in, and Connor Harding will check out. So BYU goes with Haas Cannon Emery, Childs Worthington, McSwiggan, far sideline send in for the Pilots, who trail it by nine early. McSwiggan. On the boundary, sends into JoJo Walker, holds it at his belt, begins to bounce to his right now, back to his left outside the arc, terminates in hands to Marcus Shaver. Shaver runs into Cannon, top of the key. Some contact, no call, a give to McSwiggan, offensive foul, that's called. So Portland picks up the second team foul of the game for the visitors. Foul against Marcus Shaver Jr., his first, and BYU basketball. So turnover pilots, and BYU's up 13-4, an 11 nothing spurt after trailing 4-2. Portland has not scored in the last almost four minutes of play. It's a good whistle because Cannon should have got a foul, and he didn't. Luke goes low to Yo. Oh, the in. ball tipped off of Child's hands, <laughs> and that didn't go. Almost turned into a shot attempt, inadvertently yeah. so. I mean, they would have had to count that as a yeah. bucket, right? And Yoli would have got, I guess, one free throw, but it was not a shot attempt. So it was called a foul to Akuba as Yoli mid-post left has it knocked out of bounds by Diabate. So BYU with two team fouls, out of Portland's three. A tap out gives the Cougars the ball with a 17-second shot clock. Baseline right. Haas into Yo. Back to TJ in the right corner. Elevates on McSwiggan. A driving kick high to Cannon. Left corner. Nick open for three. He got it. And BYU is four for five from three here in the first half. And the Cougar run continues. A 14 to nothing spurt. And the Cougars take a 16 to four lead. TJ, Perfectly set up. TJ gets in the paint. Kick it out. Good ball movement. There's another offensive screen foul. We'll call that on Diabate, the fourth on the Pilots, and we'll call that last great ball movement sequence, a UCCU smart decision brought to you by Utah Community Credit Union, helping people make smart financial decisions every day. Lock in a low fixed rate on a home equity line of credit with no closing fees. To learn more, visit uccu.com. It ends up in a three-pointer for Nick Emery, the assist to McKay Cannon. Great ball movement. BYU's made five in a row from the field, including four straight from three. TJ, another one right side. This one looks strong. It is heavy. And the rebound to Portland. Pilots come the other way, trailing at 16-4. to four. JoJo Walker, perimeter right to the bump straight away to Tryon. Having just checked in, Jacob Tryon missing a three, and the Pilots now 0 for 4 from distance. BYU the rebound. TJ front court, left side Nick, now top to TJ. Back to Emery. Perimeter left. 
13-25 to go till halftime. BYU 16, Portland 4. Tremendous start for the Cougs after going down 4-2. A skip pass from Yo to McKay, right wing. This three is missed, but an offensive rebound for Childs. Low to Luke, and Luke lays it up and in. Offensive rebound by Yoli Childs and the stick-back score for Luke Worthington. And BYU has scored the last 16 points of this game to take an 18-4 lead. And Terry Porter says, yeah, we got to talk about it. Second timeout taken by the Pilots here in the first half. In the first seven minutes of this game, 13.06 to go until halftime. And BYU playing some tremendous basketball right now with an 18-4 advantage. Even though McKay missed that three, that was perfectly played by Yoli. Got the touch. The double came. He immediately turns, looks far side, and McKay was just wide open. So nice job from Yoli. And then he gets the rebound and makes another great look pass uh, to uh, to Luke down low. So nice. The, the great way to attack a defense, Greg, is to get a guard, break his man down, get in the paint, create some help, and then kick it back out. And then BYU, once they get it on the perimeter, it's bam, bam, bam. They move it around because the defense is behind, and eventually you're going to have an open shot. And BYU... Nice job knocking down the threes. And the Cougars have done all their scoring without the benefit of a single free throw attempt yet. 18 to 4 the score. And again, the Cougars did trail by a score of 4 to 2. But since the 1807 mark, that was five minutes and a second ago. Portland has not scored a point. Showing some 4 to 2 out there. I mean, since then, they've been really good. And defensively, you see Dave Rose out there getting his guys down in the stance. Franklin Porter, one of two sons of Terry Porter on the team, has checked in. For Sean Clark, the pit transfer, seeing his first action of the season in this game. Ooh, and T.J. Haas, that's unfortunate. A closeout on Porter, and he has to sit with his second. Franklin Porter draws the foul on T.J. Haas. BYU's third foul and two of the three against T.J. So T.J. will have a seat. Early substitution for Gavin to get time. I like that. Gavin needs minutes on the floor. The scoreboard shows just three fouls on Portland, but they have four against, by the way, as backing up to the right corner, Chris Sean Clark. They cycle Porter to Walker and left wing Tryon. Tryon gives back to JoJo on the far sideline. A strip of Tryon. A lead pass from Celius down floor to Emery, but it was too deep, and Emery had to save back in, and in doing so, gives it to Krishan Clark ahead to Franklin Porter. Porter leans into contact, lays it up no good, rebound Celius. Quickly ahead to Nick Emery. Emery gets into the painted area, has it knocked off his leg, tracks it down, and saves to Celius on the wing left. Loose ball handled by Zach. Get back in. to Nick, and he opens it and out from three. Offensive rebound by Baxter, couldn't save it in. Goes out of bounds after all of that to Portland with 12.21 to go until halftime. Crazy sequence. A lot of stuff happening out there, a lot of stuff. And the BYU almost gets the three from Nick Emery. Just rattles out. But the score stays unchanged, 18-4. to four. So BYU's missed its last three threes after making four straight. And the Cougars are at four of seven. Make it four of eight from three. Try on left wing. Windmills and hands off to Franklin Porter. Back to try on. Takes a three left side. It's too heavy and rebound to Nick Emery. And the Pilots now 0 for 5 from three. Nick front court left side. We'll take the under 12-minute media timeout after this as Yoli Childs travels on the perimeter and turns it over. Timeout on the floor, and the score stays 18-4. BYU in front over the Portland Pilots on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. It's the first match of the season for number 5 BYU there at the Smithfield House taking on number 7 Ohio State Cougars with a 19-16 lead in set number 1 from the Smithfield House to the Merritt Center back to the voice of the Cougars Greg Rubel. Jason thank you once again 11:58 to go until halftime BYU leading it by a score of 18 to 4. BYU basketball brought to you in part by America First, Utah's number one credit union. Join us and you'll be part of a winning financial team. Go to AmericaFirst.com for details and go Cougars. Portland basketball as we come in and the Pilots weaving it outside the three-point line. Tryon, top of the key to Krishan Clark. Clark on the wing left. Jumps it from 20 feet. Missed it. Rebound McKay Cannon. Three ACL surgeries and a dislocated ankle surgery for Krishan Clark. Finally able to play now for Portland. BYU in front court. McKay will drive it, cuff it, fouled on his way to the hoop. Probably the best result there is there are a lot of big bodies in his way. Xavier Hellinen, having checked in, picks up the Pilots' fifth team foul here in half number one. It will send McKay Cannon to the free throw line for the Cougars' first free throw tries of this first half. Portland's taken one and missed it, and BYU's yet to go to the stripe until right now. And McKay Cannon there for two. BYU up 14. McKay makes the free throw. Cannon on the year coming into the CI uh, coming into the night with a 60% free throw mark and nudges that upward on the first make. 
BYUD doing a nice job staying in front of their man, forcing jumpers, contested jumpers, and Portland not hitting anything right now. Both free throws good from McKay. Portland last scored with 18.07 to go until halftime. Almost seven minutes scoreless, and BYU's run is now 18-0. An 18-0 spurt for the Cougars. Franklin Porter, stripe extended right, takes it to the top of the key, still on the bounce. Now gives right wing to Hallinan. Hallinan to the right corner. Terminates there. Pressured by Cannon, releases to Tryon. Jacob Tryon guarded by Baxter, releases high to Clark with a three-second shot clock. Krishan Clark will drive it, scoop it, miss it, foul out front before the drive, before the shot at least. On the drive, it should be non-shooting here. What do we say? Yeah, it'll be out of bounds. Fouls on Zach Selyus. He has BYU's fourth. Portland sitting at five team fouls with 11.03 to go until halftime. I really like how hard Yoli's playing. He's extremely focused on defense and helping uh, very aggressively in the in the hedges and the, the du- double teams. He's he's locked in, which is something I've missed seeing from him on defense. Hallen and Triggers gets the ball back topside, goes left side to Chris Sean Clark. Return to Hallinan between the rings. Right wing Franklin Porter jabbing on Baxter. Draws Baxter into a foul of a three-point attempt. It'll be three free throws for Franklin Porter. Baxter picks up BYU's fifth team foul. Team fouls even five apiece. And three free throws forthcoming for Franklin Porter, a 63% free throw shooter, averaging 7.1 points per game. Franklin and brother Malcolm, sons of Terry Porter. And both coming off the bench as Franklin goes to the stripe. Free throw is good. Franklin coming off a a two-point effort at LMU in the Pilots League opener. He got those two points in 17 minutes of play. Scores his first point and his second. Both coming from the free throw line. And a third of three coming up for the 6'4", 215-pound junior from right there in Portland. Transferred from St. Mary's. The rare intra-league transfer. Third free throws missed. So two for three. Befitting a 63% free throw shooter. Now some backcourt pressure by the Pilots, and BYU beats it. Bergerson in the game to Yo, left wing Zach, and a three-pointer good from Zach Selyus. So the Pilots ultimately ended BYU's 18-0 run, but the Cougars come right back and knock down another three-pointer. That's five for nine from three, and Selyus makes it 23-6. BYU's lead to a game-high 17. Three-pointer missed left side by the Pilots, rebounded by Yoli Childs, and Nick Emery front court left. Drives the base, stops, ball knocked out of his hands, got it back on the swat by Hallen into Yo for three, and that's heavy right. Rebound for Sean Clark, knocked it out of bounds, and it'll stay BYU basketball. So Cougars catch a bit of a break there with 10-10 to go until halftime, and BYU up by a score of 23-6. to Game high lead at 17 currently. Baseline send in for Emery into Baxter. Baxter's bumped to the ground, non-shooting. He'll do it again, but that's team foul six against the Pilots. And so BYU shoot the rest of the way. Franklin Porter picks this one up. So those six Portland team fouls are spread amongst six players. And normally the uh, trigger man is TJ Haas. He's sitting right now with two fouls, so Nick will send in again. Baseline to the right of the standard. And looks to the bench for some uh, advice here on this trigger. Gives the Childs back to Nick. Nick in the corner right side. Emery pulls it out into space on the right wing. Terminates. Looks low. Hands high to Bergerson. Whipped to Celius. And now left block to Gavin Baxter. One bounce. Two bounces. A step through right to the rim. Beautifully done by Gavin Baxter. Conversion at the rim. And the Cougars extend the lead to 19. Game high cushion of 19. 25 to 6. 9.45 to go till halftime. Showing improvement, Greg. St. Mary's made a couple nice post moves. Just calm down. Make a strong move. Hugh Hoagland has checked in, gave it up to the floor, goes Celius, and they're going to call Celius for taking out the legs of Franklin Porter as he fought for the ball. Just a good hustle play by Zach, though, ended up in a foul. And now team fouls are even six apiece. Both teams will shoot the rest of the way. Zach picking up his second, so both Haas and Celius, two fouls apiece here in the first half. Josh McSwiggin, the Brit, will send in right in front of us. And a bit of a delay here as Coach Terry Porter gets subs in the game. Walker and Shaver, the starting two guards, one and two are back in as Tryon and Hallinan check out. McKay Cannon subs in four. Zach Selyus having picked up, having picked up that second foul a moment ago. So sideline send in for Franklin Porter now, and he's into Walker, and we are away. BYU 25, and Portland six. The Cougars' game high lead of 19 is right now. Porter on a post feed. Baxter deflected it on the way to Hoagland, and Hoagland travel. 
So turnover pilots in BYU basketball with a 19-point cushion. That's turnover number five against the visitors to two for BYU. And nicely for a change, the points off a turnovers category is 6 nothing in BYU's favor, Mark. Uh, that seems like that's been a long time since we've seen that. It's usually been the opposite for BYU. Cougar basketball front court, top side, Baxter on the wing left to McKay Cannon. 9.15 to go till the break. Yoli Child sees a double on the post feed. Low to Baxter. Baxter up and no. What well, they call an offensive foul on Gavin. Shoved away on the block. Is that right? They did call Gav for the foul. So Baxter picks up his second. The Cougars have their seventh. And it'll be a team control, no free throw foul. Nixon will check in for Baxter. What a good few minutes for Gav. Really good. Really good. Yoli made a mistake. They're trying to go to Gav and put him in a tough spot. He had two shooters on the weak side wide open. And he elected to try and... To give it to Gavin as he caught it. He had nowhere to go with it. Really good stint. Pilot still on six points for the half. 25 to six Cougars with 9:01 to go until halftime. McSwiggin drew Canna drew Childs into a foul as Yoli hard on the closeout has his second. So, oh, beg your pardon, just first on Yo. Yeah, they, I think they, I gave the first foul of the game. They did was change it. Change it yeah. to Luke. So uh, Yoli has his first. Luke will check back in, but it'll put McSwiggin at the line for one and one. That was team foul seven. Josh McSwiggin, an 89% free throw shooter at 33 for 37 on the year. Goes to the line for one and one. The Pilots as a team are two for four at the strike. McSwiggin for the first. Got it. Now 34 of 38 on the year. He's got three points on the night. And Portland's down 25 to seven. The game changer here was an 18 to nothing. BYU spurt over almost seven minutes of play. And McSwiggin goes two for two. Four court pressure. BYU breaks it easily. Dalton will drive and kick in the corner right side to Bergerson. Ryland to Nick Emery near the timeline. Looks to the bench and gives between the circles to McKay Cannon. McKay bouncing out near the half court stripe. Right wing to Emery. Three point range. On the bump to Bergerson. A return to Nick. Nick will drive it. Fouled. And he'll put, go to the stripe for one and one. Team foul number seven. Foul number two to Marcus Shaver. So two on Shaver. He may be done here as Terry Porter sat him earlier. Brought him back in. Picks up a foul. Could be on the bench again with 8.37 to go until the break. BYU up 25 to 8. 17 a point lead. The game high lead had been 19. As Nick will shoot. One and one. And Emery on the year in limited looks is at 82% from the strike. And that's make. Cougs up 18. This would tie the game-high cushion for BYU. Should Nick make the second up two? Mm, misses it. Short on it. So 26-8 we stay with 8.30 to play in half number one. BYU playing its first home game since December 13th. Last team in here was a Portland team. Portland State. Tonight, their crosstown colleagues, the Pilots, challenging BYU. McSwiggin will drive Worthington. Running jumper is short. And what do we have? Oh, they oh, call a foul. No. Luke, they That's say, crazy. got McSwiggin on the arm. Luke was straight up and down. and That was excellent, excellent defense. And the official who makes the call is the one farthest away across. <laughs> I mean, just nothing there. That was like uh, the foul at Pacific. I mean, yeah. just nothing to it. And the free throw is good. And for an official to come over and kind of overrule everybody from across the way, it's just puzzling. McSwiggin makes the first of two on the phantom foul. And the second of two as well. Portland Clint gets the double figures at 10, 26 to 10, 8, 10 to go until halftime. Cougars done unjustly there. Worthington front court as BYU beats Press. Goes to Cannon out near the timeline. Back to Nick. Nick straight away will go to the under eight minute media timeout on the next whistle. Cannon, 35 feet away straight away. Right side to Nick. Nick will drive the base, get right to the rim. A send through that's too high and turned over. Intended for Bergerson timeout on the floor. BYU's lead 16, 26 to 10. 7.50 to go until halftime here on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. Back to Mark Durant and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. For more BYU basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Whether business, pleasure, a basketball game, or the area's best attractions bring you to Provo, we can't wait to see you on your next adventure at the Provo Courtyard by Marriott. BYU 26, Portland 10. And yeah, BYU has been struggling mark of late. They lost 4 of 5, uh, 9 and 8 on the year. But man, what a nice crowd to welcome the Cougars back. 
Yeah, BYU fans get a, a bad racket sometimes. I mean, obviously they want success, but uh, they're, they're, you know, they, they come out and support you. And uh, BYU is giving them something nice to see, too. And they're, I think, feeding off being at home. And, uh, they've had some problems, but whatever they were, they've uh, certainly been cured here in the first half anyway. BYU shooting 56% for the half, 50% from the three-point line. Portland basketball as we come back in, playing with two fouls. Marcus Shaver drives, gets right to the rim, scoops and scores with the right hand. Marcus Shaver with his first field goal, first points of the night. Portland's closed it to a 14-point game. Five points off the game high. Lead for BYU of 19. Emery. Top side to Nixon. Yoli Childs is checked back in. Bergerson low to Yo. Deflected pass is turned over. Steal by the Pilots. And here comes Marcus Shaver down the barrel. And right back the other way, Nick Emery. Thievery. And off the steal. Nick the other way. Into the paint. Right wing to Cannon. To Bergerson. He'll drive it. Draw some contact. Bank and score! A chance for a three-point play. Ryland Bergerson forcing the issue. Gating into the painted area. Banking and scoring with contact. The foul to Hoagland and Rye for a three-point play. That all started with Nick Emery, who just snatched the pass in midair and then got a got a transition going the other way, put Ryland in a, a nice spot to take it strong to the hoop. Team foul number eight for Portland to BYU's nine. The Pilots will shoot two the rest of the way. This to complete a three-point play for Ryland Bergerson. No, he missed the free throw. BYU's three of five at the stripe. 28-12, BYU's lead 16. Walker. Bounces it high to McSwiggin. McSwiggin, left wing to Porter. A drive and kick high to Diabate. Diabate, Walker. Walker between the circles to McSwiggin. 25 feet on the left side. McSwiggin will drive, float it, bank it strong. Rebound, McKay Cannon. McKay, down floor, Emery on the wing left side. Into a transition triple that's just a little heavy in the rebound to Diabate. Loose on the floor. Diabate on the baseline. Just rolls it out there to JoJo Walker. BYU keeps the 16-point lead with six and a half to go until halftime. Walker draws a foul by McKay Cannon. Two shots coming up, but the Pilots on team foul 10 as McKay picks it up. So Celius with two, Baxter with two, Haas with two, Worthington with two. And now Singletons for Cannon and Childs gets you to 10. And two free throws here for Portland and JoJo Walker to the stripe where he shoots 73% on the season. Scoreless on the night, so the two high-scoring guards, one and two guards, Walker and Shaver, have just two points between the two of them. Walker looking to score his first point of the evening at the free-throw line and rattles that one home. Double-figure scoring in six of the last seven coming in two tonight for JoJo Walker, also from Portland. He made 13 of 13 free-throws at LMU and makes the first one tonight and the second, so at least 15 in a row. For JoJo Walker, as he goes two for two in Portland, is now eight for ten at the free throw line. Taking twice as many free throws as BYU. The Cougar lead still doubling up. The Pilots 28 to 14. Ryland will drive, send out to Yo. Yo into the painted area, knocks a man over, turnover on the offensive foul, and that's two on Childs. Five Cougars with two fouls apiece here in the first half. So Portland looking to hang in here toward the break, and it's been the end of halves, end of first halves. Lately, I think that Dave would like to see tidied up a little bit. BYU's been sloppy since they kind of got this big lead. Uh, That shot from Nick Emery was probably ill-advised. In transition, long, contested three. Uh, Just kind of relax everybody, get get in that offense, get good looks at the basket. Turnovers now, six apiece into an 18-footer is Marcus Shaver missed it. Good box out by Colby Lee, allowing Connor Harding to grab the rebound. Harding back in and Colby in for the first time. Bergerson three in the right corner is around and out. Rebounded by McSwiggin. BYU now five for 12 from three. Right corner, Shaver got past Nixon, stepped on the sideline, turnover Portland now. So the seventh giveaway by the Pilots gives it back to BYU. Cougars doubling up Portland by a score of 28-14, to 14, but the Cougars scoring clip cooling just somewhat here. 5.58 to go until the break. BYU up 14, had been as large as 19 the first half lead. Cannon will walk it into half court. BYU in white, Portland in black, and a shove off by Connor Harding, another foul against BYU. And on Connor, that is going to be his first. Bit of an acting job to really sell that, but he, he did. They got He got the whistle. Twelve first-half team fouls against BYU with still 5.49 to go until halftime. Porter, straight away McSwiggin. Shaver, 30 feet away, left angle. A bounce pass left corner to Porter. He'll drive Nixon down the base. 
And the whistle's heard, and a bump by Nixon. Free throws for Portland. Team foul number 13 here in the first half. And two shots for the Pilots on the foul to Nixon. And the only BYU players without fouls right now are Emery, Bergerson, and Colby Lee, who just checked in a moment ago. Two free throws here for Porter. That's a make. He's three of four at the free throw line. And free throws are where the Pilots are hanging in this one. They're now nine for 11 from the stripe to BYU's three for five. Pretty unusual at home to have that as the second free throw is good. BYU has really picked up the intensity defensively, but uh, that's that's pretty pretty big disparity. A week ago tonight, we saw a 21-point lead go away. The 19-point lead's down to 12 as Hunter takes it hard to the hole. Connor Harding, and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws out of it. Good play by BYU to get low and get into a scoring position, drawing some contact on the foul to Diabate, his second, and Harding to the line. Connor on the year. 65% hasn't taken a free throw tonight. Starting his eighth consecutive game for Dave Rose. Coming off a 5.4 rebound outing on the weekend at St. Mary's. Connor makes the free throw. And BYU's up 29 to 16. 5.25 to go until halftime. BYU fans, StubHub is your ticket out to once-in-a-lifetime experiences from BYU games to amazing concerts to shows you don't want to miss. StubHub, be there. StubHub is the official ticketing partner of the BYU Cougars. As Connor Harding goes two for two, settles BYU back in. 30 to 16, the Cougar lead with 5.20 to go till the break. JoJo Walker sizing up things out front on the wing right side to Franklin Porter. Porter to the top of the key. Nixon closes out, forcing a pass right side to Shaver, and a holds call beneath the basket. That'll be number 14 against BYU here in the first half. Kobe Lee picks it up, and now only Bergerson and Emery have not heard the whistle. And it'll be two more free throws for Portland. We have seen 23 fouls here in the first half. Another really bad call. I was watching Colby specifically, oddly enough, on that play. He had a nice swim through to get in front of his man as the free throws miss. That's, That's Theo, good defense. Theo Akuba at the free throw line, only a 41% free throw shooter. And somewhat predictably misses number one. Here comes the second from Okuba. BYU by 14. Oh. Lead stays 14. The second one is strong. Three Cougars in position for a rebound, and Nixon grabs it. So 0 for 2 on that trip. BYU 30. Portland 16. Five minutes even to go until halftime. Cougars trailed 2-0, trailed 4-2, and haven't trailed since. Colby Lee straddling the three-point line. Gives to Bergerson on the wing right side. Rye to Colby, short corner right. Kind of a excuse-me shot from 18 feet that's short. Rebounded by the Pilots and down floor. Porter from three in the left corner. That's good. Franklin Porter, transition triple. He's got seven, and Portland is closed within 11. Dave Rose has got TJ and Yoli uh, sitting there with two, and I think he wants to just ride out the rest of the half. First three of the game for the Pilots now, one for seven from distance. BYU's 19-point leads down to 11. As McKay Cannon from the top of the key goes to Nixon, drives hard to the hole, and misses the lay-in at the rim. There's some contact and no call, and here come the Pilots on the rebound. McSwiggin, left wing Walker. Walker back to McSwiggin on the arc left side. He'll drive it, kick it. Walker for three, and that's good again. And Dave Rose calls timeout down to an eight-point lead. 30-22, to 22, the Pilots are back in it. 4.05 to go until halftime, and the foul trouble's been trouble for BYU. Too many scoring options on the bench, and TJ picking up two early ones. It's now coming home to roost a little bit as Nick Emery will check back in. BYU needing some scoring, and man, leads have dipped up late. 21-point lead at Pacific went away, all the way away. BYU trailed by one late in that game. We'll take a break with 4.05 to go until halftime. BYU's up 30-22 to on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. In the top 25, under three minutes to go, number two, Michigan leading at Illinois, 68 to 56. Back over to the Marriott Center. Let's finish out the first half. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thank you, Shep. In the first 12 and a half minutes, Portland scored 12 points. They have 10 in the last three and a half minutes. They're on a 16 to 5 run, are the Pilots, and trail BYU by just eight now, 30 to 22. 3.50 to go till halftime. BYU basketball front court left side, Harding. Harding to the bump. Yoli Childs playing with two, takes a three, and misses it. For Sean Clark, the rebound for Portland. Yoli now one for three from three. BYU's lead down to eight. Had led by 19. 
16 to 5, Pilots run. Clark step back, 20 footer. Good. Six point lead. Krishan Clark has his first points of the season. And it's 30 to 24. It's a whole new ball game. And TJ Haas with two fouls will come back in. The only Childs with two fouls is playing. As Dave Rose says this is a serious time of the game. Nixon bobbles the post feed, sends it out to Emery. Who's going to make a big shot for BYU? Feels totally different in this building. Nick will drive the base all the way to the rim. Missed it. And two positional Cougars crank grab the rebound. And Portland has it the other way. Sean Clark out front, bodied by Nick Emery. No call. Terry Porter wondering why. Of course, he's had 14 fouls go his way here in the first half. Portland basketball, front court left side. Can the Cougars just get a miss here? Walker out front. Turns McKay Cannon over to Yoli Childs. A flare to the right wing to Porter. Porter on the right wing. Crossing over Nixon. Drives the baseline. Shoves him away. And Nixon stands his ground and forces a turnover. Dalton on the steal. BYU in front court. Two and a half to go till halftime. And another end of a first half. Threatening to do BYU in here a bit here tonight. Yoli's spending too much time on the perimeter. Get on the block. Force the issue. Yoli's doubled. Left block. Dribbles out to the corner. Skips it all the way across the floor to Cannon. Cannon right corner. Harding. Harding will penetrate. Jump stop in the lane. Missed the lay-in. Offensive rebound. Yo. Tried to go back up with it. He was fouled. It'll be one and one or two here. Two for BYU. Team foul 10. The foul to Akuba, his second, and BYU does get two free throws in a six-point game. BYU did lead this game 25-6. Since that time, it's an 18-5 run for Portland. Yoli shoots two big ones here. Because of foul trouble, it screws with your rotations a little bit as Yoli makes the first. and BYU got stuck with a kind of a an, an offense on the floor that wasn't a potent offense, let's say. You always have to have either Yoli or TJ on the floor, I think. And uh, and BYU's trying to get by because they had a lead of not putting them in the game, but it uh, it hurt them. And Yoli misses the second. BYU 6 for 9 at the free throw line. Portland 10 for 14. BYU leads it by 7, 31-24. BYU playing with two players on the floor with two fouls. Walker will drive and kick left corner for Porter. Missed the three. The rebound, Portland. Reset. Porter again. Drives the end line. Cut off in the short corner. Out to JoJo for three, and that's good. JoJo Walker is second three. And Portland, which couldn't make a three in the first 15 minutes, is hitting repeatedly. And now it's a four-point game. 31-27. to 27. 90 seconds to go till halftime. Portland was miserable early, and they're right back in it. Yo. There you go. Nicely done. Walking down the end line and reversing for the score. 33-27. Took his way down low and got on the other side of the rim, flipped it over the hoop and good. And that's what you wanted him to do, Mark. A nice, strong move at the basket. Got to get a stop now at the other end. BYU 33, Portland 27. For Sean Clark, perimeter right, jumps the three. Good. Three-point game. They're feeling it. Can you as, believe it? As bad as they were, they've got their confidence now. Missed their first six and have gone four for five since from three. And that 19-point lead is almost all gone. 33-30. to 30. TJ open three left corner to answer. No. Barely glances the rim. 35 seconds to go till halftime. For Sean Clark, front court left side. A no-look low to Akuba, deflected out of bounds by BYU State's Portland basketball with a 25-second shot clock and a 32.2-second game clock. It's really fascinating, Greg, that how night and day this team could be, even in one half. I mean, it looked like they were going to win by 50, and now they can't do anything right. Portland scored 12 points in 12 and a half minutes and have scored 18 points in six and a half minutes. Clark, left wing Walker. 33-30, BYU in front. Clark, far sideline. Takes Harding to the perimeter, steps back on him, a three. No. D, great D. Rebound on the end line, saved in by Bergerson to Nixon. Nixon hounded by McSwiggin to BYU with seven seconds to go till halftime. Can play for a final shot. Bergerson takes it with four and knocks down the three. And that's how the half will end. Nice shot in the arm there from Ryland Bergerson. Gives BYU a six-point lead at halftime at 36-30. to 30. 
The Cougs make their sixth three of the first half as the half is about to come to a close. Now it has closed with BYU up six. BYU 6 of 15 from 3 in the first half. Those are 6 Mountain America 3-pointers. With every 3-pointer, Mountain America donates $50 to the American Red Cross. We'll come back with a halftime recap next. Cougs up 6 at the break on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 20 minutes of Cougar basketball are in the books. Ahead to Nixon. Nixon's layup is good. It's a dunk. Forget the layup. He throws it down. You're tuned to Cougar Halftime Live. To break down the first half, let's join your host, Jason Shepard. Yoli Childs leads the Cougars in scoring with eight points, and BYU leads Portland at the half, 36-30. to Coming up on Cougar Halftime Live, brought to you by Nissan. We'll check out scores tonight in college basketball, both in the Top 25 and the West Coast Conference. Plus, we'll look ahead to tonight's BYU women's basketball and BYU men's volleyball. First match of the season, taking on number 7 Ohio State. We'll let you know how things are going over at the Smithfield House. In the meantime, let's check you back in with the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, with a recap on the first half. Thanks a lot, Shep. Uh, BYU at one point with the, uh, in fact, under 10 minutes to go in the first half. BYU with a 19-point lead, 25-6. to But uh, the half closes with Portland outscoring BYU 25-11. to And BYU leads the break by a score of 36-30. to 24-11, to beg your pardon. But uh, Portland did finish the first half strongly and makes it a 36-30 lead for BYU with the break. Cougars shoot 44% from the field, 40% from three, 67% at the free throw line. Portland goes 33, 33, and 71. So the number's not great, but uh, good enough as BYU dealt with foul trouble and uh, suffered as a result. 14 team fouls were called against BYU, 10 against Portland. So 24 whistles in the first half of play as BYU takes that uh, six-point cushion to the locker room, Mark. Yeah, I mean, this team has been feast or famine all year long. We saw it in one half here tonight and part of the problem of, of course is the is the foul trouble so you get out of your rotations I think at one point there a BYU had uh, a Bergerson, Lee uh, Nixon McKay and Connor Harding out there they're, they're fine players but that's not a scoring offense and, and they, they went really dry at that point and then uh, Portland got, got hot so uh, you know obviously there's some things you have to deal with with the foul trouble but that wasn't wasn't good lineup management from the coaching staff to put that lineup that without having a TJ or, or or Yoli on the floor even with the fouls. And uh, a lot of coaches will, will will sit a guy with two fouls, but and they do measure this. Dave is uh, Dave Rose is among the most likely of coaches nationally to make sure a guy sits uh, uh, minutes with, with two fouls. And he did have to sit both Haas and Childs yet, but as we saw late, had to bring both back in yeah, the game. Well, I, I think you can if you can get away with it. That's what he wanted to do. I think he waited too long to get them back in. At that point, Portland had all the momentum, and BYU was really struggling. And, and then you get your guys back in, and they kind of held it off a little bit at the end there. But that, that, that was probably waiting too long to make that decision. But let's focus on this fact for a moment. Uh, a BYU team really struggling to stop people uh, has held Portland to 30 points in the first half, and that's a good thing. BYU's 36 come on 8 from Childs, 7 from Cannon, 5 from Bergerson, 5 from Harding, 3 from Zach Selyus, 4 from Nick Emery, uh, 2 for Gavin Baxter, 2 for Luke Worthington, and that gets you to 36. Portland's 30. Coming on eight points from JoJo Walker, seven from Franklin Porter, six from Josh McSwiggin, five from Chris Sean Clark playing his first game of the season, and two for Tahiro Diabate. Uh, no players in double figures in half number one. After the first half, it is BYU 36 and Portland 30. BYU unbeaten this season when leading at the half. Uh, here at home, at least 6-0. and They are 8-1 and on the year when leading at the break overall. Portland, when trailing at half, is 4-8 and this year. It is time now for Cougar Halftime Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Shep, over to you at BYU Radio. 